Next is intramolecular SN2 reaction. Uh, let's take an example. I have a chlorine attached over here and I have an OH over here. Okay. Now, let's say I have taken NaOH in the solution which is exactly one equivalent to make sure that it just reacts with one mole of this, that's all. I mean, we don't have excess of NaOH. So what will happen? This NaOH will basically create OH minus. This OH minus can act as a base also and this can act as a nucleophile also. If it will act as a base, it will pull out the hydrogen from here. And if it will act as a nucleophile, it will kick out the chlorine from here. So it has two options. One is removal of this hydrogen by acting as a base. And other is removal of chlorine by acting as a nucleophile. What it would prefer doing? It will prefer removing this OH or taking this, uh, sorry, it will, it will prefer taking this H out of the OH because that will be an acid-base reaction. And acid-base reactions are much faster than other substitution reactions. So this OH minus will take away this hydrogen, will form H2O. Okay, so what we'll be left with? What we will get after this will happen? We will get O minus Cl and Na plus over here. So Cl is as it is. Hydrogen has been taken by OH minus by acting as by acting as a base, and the reaction which is happening is an acid base reaction. Okay, now, now what's next? This O minus is a better nucleophile, definitely a better nucleophile than chlorine. We have a chlorine, which is a nucleophile over here, and we have O minus also and another nucleophile over here. This is this can act as a leaving group if this O minus attacks on this carbon through an SN2 mechanism. If that will happen, this bond between this carbon and this chlorine will break and bond between and between oxygen and carbon will form so in result the product form would be how many carbons are there one two three did i miss on any carbon one two three four oh i missed a carbon altogether <coughs> So it is chlorine here. So attack will not happen on this carbon. Instead, this attack of oxygen will happen on this carbon. And the chlorine will be removed. And we will get five-membered ring of ether. So we will have one, two, three, four, four carbons. One, two, three, four. Epoxide will be formed with the release of Cl minus. This is called inter intramolecular SN2. I'll explain you once again. So what we have taken is we have taken a molecule where we have a chlorine as well as OH both in a molecule and we are taking NaOH which is acting as a which can act as a base as well as act as a nucleophile we have taken exactly one equivalent over here now NaOH will give you OH minus this OH minus can release can can uh, this OH minus can take H plus from this OH by acting as a base and can do the acid base reaction or it can act as a nucleophile can replace this chlorine from this position but what will it prefer doing? It will prefer doing acid-base reactions because acid-base reactions are faster. So this OH- minus will take away this H forming H2O and what we will be left with O- minus and Na+. Plus. Now, once this is formed, this O- minus will be acting as a nucleophile, a stronger nucleophile in the chain itself. 
and hence will attack on the carbon where other nucleophilic end is there or you can say the other leaving group is present. So this oxygen will attack on this carbon and that is going to be a back attack definitely. Will make sure this chlorine bond breaks and it will form and this oxygen and this carbon will combine. Just mark the number of carbons all the time whenever you are doing a chain, uh, a cyclic chain break reaction or a formation of a cyclic chain reaction so that you can place things exactly at the position where they, they, they are supposed to be. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. This oxygen will get attached to the first oxygen and it is already attached to the fourth oxygen. This is how an epoxide will be formed. Okay, now we'll do some questions based on this intramolecular SN2 to make sure that we have understood the concept. Now try out these questions. These questions are mixed questions from the concepts what we have learned. So it's not only on intramolecular SN2, just identify and uh, understand the question and do it, do it yourself and I'll explain the whole concept behind these questions. Okay, now let's discuss uh, the answers of or uh, solution of these questions. Now, this NaOH will split into Na plus and OH minus. OH minus will take this hydrogen with it. Loss of water will take place. It will form Br, C, 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 O minus. O minus will act as a nucleophile internally. Internally, it will attack on the carbon where the leaving group is present or where the other nucleophilic end is. And it will do a back attack, so SN2 reaction. This will kick out bromine and the chain will become a five-membered epoxide. Is this clear? Next. Now, Again here, OH- minus will be attacking on the hydrogen first, hydrogen of alcohol, to take out the hydrogen as H+, plus and act as a base over there. So we will get I, C, CH3, CH3, C, 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 O-, carbon, 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 CH3, and Cl. Okay, now this O- minus has two carbon possibilities or two carbons where it can attack. So it has this carbon where there is a nucleophilic end and this is also another carbon where the nucleophilic end is present. Now if I check the leaving group capability, iodine is definitely a better leaving group as compared to chlorine. But it will be able to leave only when O- minus will be able to attack. As we already know, this is an SN2 reaction. So in the SN2 reaction, we, we look for the crowding. Look at this carbon. This is highly crowded. There are, two, there are three uh, branches on the carbon. Whereas on this carbon, there, is only, there are only two branches. Or you can say it is, this carbon is connected to only two direct carbons. So this O- would, would prefer attacking on this carbon. Okay. Will lead to the removal of chlorine and will form a cyclic ether over here whereas this chain will remain as it is. So the compound form will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it will be like four membered epoxide. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. On fourth position, we have this whole chain connected. So this will be the product form. I hope you have understood. If you have not understood, you can ask me in the class. Why? I'll explain you again why this O- minus has attacked on this carbon instead of attacking on this carbon because of the less crowding. If, though I, I is a better leaving group, still the attack has happened on that carbon because O- minus would not be able to attack itself if there is, very, there is a very high crowding on the carbon where the leaving group is present. So we will give preference to this carbon as compared to this and epoxide will form at this end whereas this end will remain free. Now, 
Now let's see the next question. <clears throat> we have a base. This is not a. This is not. A, this is this is the question which in, includes all the concepts what we have learned. This is a base. Okay, in a basic medium. So this, this not in a basic medium. Sorry, this is a base creating a basic medium. So we have learned this, that if ether is present in a basic medium, the reaction goes through SN2 mechanism. And we also know this, that this particular nucleophile is a strong nucleophile, so would preferably go through SN2 mechanism. So what all different areas it has, or what all different carbons it has where it can attack. I mean, not it has, but what all different carbons we have in our compound where this nucleophile can attack. So we have, let's mark the carbons. This is carbon number one, this is carbon number two, and this is carbon number three. Okay. Now, we have three pathways. One is this nucleophile attacks on carbon number one. Other is this nucleophile attacks on carbon number 2 and third is this nucleophile attacks on carbon number 3. Why? On first carbon also there is a leaving group present. On second carbon also there is a leaving group present. And on the third carbon also there is a leaving group present. So where exactly it is going to attack? It is not going to attack on all the three positions. So on carbon 1, attack will not happen. Why? Reason, we have just now learned that reactivity of epoxide towards SN2 is greater than your Rx. So when, I, when it has an option to react with ether or epoxide, why will it attack on the carbon where an haloalkane is present? So the attack will not happen on carbon number 1. Now what about carbon number 2? On carbon 2, carbon is carbon 14, which is a heavier isotope of carbon. So breaking the bond of a heavier isotope is difficult. Hence, you can say reaction is slow for heavier isotopes due to stronger bond strength stronger bonds the reaction will not take place on the second carbon so what we are left with we are left with the third option so this uh, we are left with the third carbon so this uh, this this nucleophile will attack on the third carbon so how exactly the reaction will take place let's see just let me get a pen a different color pen Hmm. So, I'll just write it down over here. What will happen? Now I'm writing it neatly over here because we have already discussed the cases. Now we know that MES minus is going to attack on this carbon. If this will attack on this carbon, the bond between oxygen and carbon will also break and hence and hence the molecule will become like this. Right? So we have used a concept of uh, epoxide in a basic medium. We have done the SN2 reaction. We have broken the bond of carbon and oxygen. The nucleophile has attacked, has done a back attack over here. Now we have generated O- minus over here. Now we have not been given H3O+, plus, which we generally used to do. We used to do the next follow-up of a reaction by adding H3O+, plus in it, so that we can balance out the charge of O-, minus and we can make it alcohol. But as we are not given with H3O+, plus, what this O- minus will do? O- minus will do internal SN2, or it, you can say inter, intramolecular SN2. So what is intramolecular SN2? Where a nucleophile, in the in the molecule itself will attack onto the another nucleophilic site where 
uh, uh, where the attack is sorry uh, so where what, what will happen your uh, a nucleophile there in a, in a molecule there will be new two nucleophilic sites a stronger nucleophile will attack onto the weaker nucleophilic site will replace that nucleophile or will kick out that nucleophile and will make the bond with that carbon so here this oxygen will attack on this carbon will kick out this bromine we know O minus is a better nucleophile than bromine. SN2 reaction will take place. So let's mark this carbon as 1, 2 and 3. 1, 2. And bromine is kicked out and the compound formed will be MES. Oxygen will get connected to the first carbon. This is carbon number 1, this is carbon number 2. The oxygen is currently present on carbon number 2. Now it will come between carbon 1 and 2. So it will get connected to carbon 1 as well as carbon 2. Hence forming this as a product. I will quickly uh, explain you once again. So what has happened, I will just... I'll just quickly summarize it. We had MES as a, a, a MES which was creating a basic medium. It was acting as a nucleophile. It had three sites where it could react. One is carbon number one, one is carbon number two, and one is carbon number three. On carbon number one, it did not react with the carbon number one. Why? Because SN2 react SN2 reaction is faster for ethers as compared to RX. So possibility of reacting with carbon number one is anyways gone come to the carbon number two here we have carbon 14 which is a heavier isotope of carbon and the reaction will be slower or you can say the bonds are much stronger hence breaking that bond breaking the bond between carbon and oxygen will be little tougher and hence this nucleophile will not attack on the second carbon instead it will attack on the third on the third carbon which is a normal carbon 12 it will attack on the third carbon and the bond between third carbon and oxygen will break, forming MES here and forming and, and giving the O minus charge on the second carbon. Now, this O minus doesn't have any other, uh, any other H plus or anything to neutralize this. So, this will be acting as a very strong nucleophile. It will look out for a site where it can attack and it can make a bond. So, on the first carbon, we have a the first carbon has a nucleophilic end which is relatively a weaker nucleophile. So O minus will do a back attack, will kick out the bromine and will make a bond with the first carbon, forming an epoxide over here. So in this reaction, we have used two concepts. One is the reaction of uh, epoxide in a basic medium, and second is intramolecular SN2 reaction. So this is about your intramolecular SN2 reaction and all other reactions what we can do with the epoxide.